Usually, when comedians put footage of themselves on YouTube, it's from a show that went really well. So what I thought I'd do is share some footage from a show that went really badly. This was from the Bahamas earlier this year. This was the last show in a run of 13, and it started off not too bad. Oh, are you from England, sir? Would you like some bar? I want your bagel, sir. A spot of tea with your bagel. And I think that's racist. I can't imagine an Asian guy walks in and he starts going, Oh, you want chop suey, not bagel? Then, I told this joke. I was in Paducah, Kentucky. I saw a fight in Paducah. Get this, right? The man, there's a couple outside a shopping mall. The man called his wife in front of other people. These are his words, not mine. He called her a skanky ashed hoe. <laughs> and he had a plate of Chinese food from the mall threw it into her face. Yeah, it played public. I was appalled. If you're going to throw food into the face of your skanky ass home, you remember where you are. You show some bloody respect. Yeah, you're in Kentucky. It is KFC or nothing, right? This is the same joke in front of a different audience. You're in Kentucky, it is KFC or nothing, am I right? <laughs> now look at this joke. You can get your hair cut in Walmart. That doesn't seem to be a surprise to you. <laughs> when I was a kid, that's what you'd say if another kid came to school with a shitty haircut. <laughs> you get your hair cut in Walmart. <laughs> The kids in Harrisburg can't say that. They've been, they've been robbed of the opportunity to taunt their friends with that jive. You try saying that now as a kid in Harrisburg. You get your hair cut in Walmart. <laughs> yes, I do. What's your point? <laughs> your mama cut my hair in Walmart. And here it is again in the Bahamas. You can't say that growing up in America. You get your hair cut in Walmart. <laughs> yeah, that's right, I do. What's your point? Your mama cut my hair in Walmart. <laughs> so I thought the best way out of this is to try a bit of audience banter. And this happened. What's your name, sir? Nigel. Nigel. Nice to meet you, Nigel. 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 You have a lot more friends here tonight than I do. <laughs> and then this. <laughs> And incidentally, I have a word I said conch. Though. How do you say it here, Philip and Anthony? Conch. Conch. Do you know why I said conch? Because I'm an ass. Because I'm an ass. <laughs> and it was at that point that I started to self implode. I, I don't feel I've got all of you quite where I want you. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, I've shown you for two weeks. So far, this isn't going quite as well as the others. I'm going to be honest with you. But I want you to know it's not you, it's me. Or maybe it's you and me. But I don't think it's that. If anybody can work out what's going wrong with this show, I'd be very happy to hear any advice about it. I'm going to have to do something about it. Because right now, I feel that um, I'm... Um, I'll tell you what I feel like. It's like... Um... I'll tell you what I feel like. About two weeks before I came out, I was in London, and there was, um, I was in, waiting for a bus in Leicester Square, and there was, um, there was a woman, right, who was... Uh, she was completely mental, and she was talking, she was preaching to the bus queue. And what everyone in the bus queue did is they just went quiet and stared. And, uh, and she carried on talking, but no one was paying attention. Now, I know you're kind of paying attention, but uh, it's quite weird, because you, I've come here to make you laugh. You've come here to laugh, and I'm not making you laugh, but I feel that I'm, I'm fucking up big time at the moment. You're, you're going to be serious. You're going to be serious. I did hear that. I've got fucking ears, sir. Yes, I did hear that. So, um, I thought what we'd do is we'd acknowledge the reality of where we're at, and then from, from the reality of where we're at, we can hopefully find a way out together collectively, and then move on to a better show together. And that's what I'm possibly in another building. I don't know. Hopefully, it should. So things improved a bit, and I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll do my Burger King routine, because that always works. Usually, it ends like this. And I nearly said thank you. <laughs> I thought if I do, he'll say you're welcome. I'll be back where I started. So I thought, he said, have a nice day. I've got to say something else. You too. And he said thank you. And I said, you're welcome.
me to say thank you. And I thought, if I do, if you'll say you're welcome, I'll be back where I started. So I did. I thought, he said, have a nice day. I've got to say something else. So I said, you too. And he said, thank you. And I said, you're welcome. <laughs> and I want you to know, I'm never, ever going to forget this particular performance of that routine, ladies and gentlemen. I've never, ever experienced. It was actually exciting to hear the level of silence. <laughs>